Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Bonita, and um, we are um, today. It's going to be so much fun. So I want you to know I'm going to the camera is only filming me. Um, I'm going to record like the presentation, and I'll record the meditations. We're going to do like three different meditations today, because each time you go in, you'll be like, ah, now I know more what I'm doing. But I'm not going to record our personal shared time. So um, uh, after the meditation, when everyone comes back and we do the share, that all only stays in this room with you all. And oh, that's the water. <laughs> um, so uh, welcome here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, soul retrieval is like one, it's one of my favorite ever ceremonies because it is like a hundred percent self empowering. Um, uh, last weekend I did a cord cutting ceremony, which I feel is like phase one and soul retrieval is like phase two, like the next stage up on skill development along the same path. Um, with uh, cord cutting and um, oh. okay no no it's a little distracting but <laughs> but once it's boiling it'll make lots of people happy so that's good um, with cord cutting you um, connect energetically like you call someone or something or some place or some memory that you're connected to and um, you really examine the energy that exists between the two of you you look at the direction of flow is it all flowing through you to the other are you being vampired and sucked dry or is like love energy going from you and toxic energy is coming to you or is it mutual love but it's under all this debris and garbage or like you look at the energy and uh, it can present different ways it may actually look like lines of energy it may look like um, poison ivy vines you know it it may look it can it, and it can present differently each time um, and then you take a cutting implement whatever appears in your hand and that can be different each time and you cut through the energy love can never be severed love can be amplified it can be purified the debris can be severed off the love but the love is never severed and um everything non-love either is absorbed back uh, or it is sent off or it's dissipated whatever so if you go on my youtube channel and if any of you do not subscribe to my youtube channel please subscribe um hi it's perfect we're just getting started <laughs> um, so um i have uh the presentation and the meditation from last weekend's cord cutting ceremony on youtube just as this is going to go on there so you can find it there and go through that if you want but the whole point of cord cutting or i call it more cord cleansing is to make sure only love is connected and seeing if the love is going only from you to the other uh or if it's like 80 percent love going to you and 20 percent love coming back which can be you know if you are in a role where you're nurturing someone and they need a lot of nurturing it, that could be then you want to make sure that divine love is coming into you and flowing through you so you're not exhausted by this just as we were discussing in the caregiving situation um, so it just helps you really learn what is your relationship with others um, so that's the whole cord cutting ceremony the soul retrieval ceremony is like the next stage up so you're like okay so i cut cords and we're all cleansed and everything is good but i feel like there's a part of me that's still missing what's the deal with that um 
so soul retrieval most people consider it a shamanic ceremony it's actually like yeah yeah I mean, it's a big time shamanic but it's not just shamanic you can go to any indigenous culture um and there's some form of soul retrieval process that can snag what are you doing i'm just sitting yeah it's short for lord snaggletooth yes um so <laughs> he wants to learn he said someone took part of my soul and won't give it back i think it's that cat that i live with <laughs> So we're going to talk first about some of the reasons why part of your soul might not be in your body. Because there are like many reasons and they're not all bad. They're not all good. Some of them just are. So first of all, there's um, sharing soul shards by contract. And that's, um, you know, generally done on a higher plane before you come to life. Um say you're coming to life and you're like, Benita, I'm going to a life that's really a difficult challenge for me, but I want to make sure I get through it. So it's something you're good at. Will you give me a portion of your soul to help me with this? So then you might go to me, you might go to her, might go to her. We may ha get, you know, like anyone who's good at it, you're like, give me splinters, give me splinters. I need a diverse platform of skill and ability because I want this to be a one and done karmic lesson. I don't want to have to repeat it because I got something more interesting waiting for me to do and I got to do this before I can do that. Um, or I might say, um, and then when you're done with life, all of the shards automatically return to us because this was a, a soul contract. It was by mutual agreement. Um, or I might say, oh, you're going to be doing something that I'm going to do in my next life. So let me send a fragment of my soul with you so that then when I'm doing it, you know, in a hundred years, I already got a little bit of comfort with it. So, you know, the, this is, yes. depending on the contract. Okay. Okay. So it could be, I might say, well, that looks like a really cool life you're on. So I'm going to do a ride along all throughout or, okay. Uh, so you need to get through like by age eight, I'm done with my part. When that's done, this will return to me. So it, it can be either way. It doesn't matter when we're not in our physical being, we're energy. I can give you a fragment of my soul and I can still go off and be living a life elsewhere. You know, we, we can divvy up. It, it's we're, the concept of you can only be in one place at one time is like, doesn't work when we're light beings. So, um, in fact, if you have been around for a couple of thousand years worth of lives, odds are you are definitely in more than one body at this moment because you have more skill. You have more ability to multitask and to manage. It would be kind of boring to be like, I'm born, I lived, I died. <sighs> Let's do it again. Uh, <laughs> it is more likely that if you are the age of 70 in a life, you are also like at least a young child because like the young child and the old soul, they're easier to manage simultaneously. And uh, if you're an older soul, odds are you're also like in this life right now. So you're in this life and you're also someone very old and you're something that you're like, you know what? Every 30 years, I throw one down there. Uh, that these are, these are, more the more experience you get the more because we want to challenge ourselves and there's no challenge if you're like oh, let's wait till we get done with this life oh, on to the next um i have a very dear friend who he and i are of the same soul 
and the first moment we met we felt like like brother and sister we felt like one he's like 20 some years younger than me we are so close we are so close and um you know we're always there for each other we have nothing in common completely different lives i have no idea why he's living the life he's living and it's actually by happenstance that we ever ran into each other but once we did and we connected he doesn't believe in any of this stuff it is really funny but whenever i hang out with my divine friends and he'll come along because i ask him like hey you know in prana shakti we're working on uh healing joints I, you know come on along and and he'll be like, yeah, sure, that sounds weird, let's do it, you know, or hey, I need someone to practice, like, energy healing on for a technique, come on, and he's like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know, um, so he'll come along, and then divine people go, you're one, I'm like, yeah, I know, <laughs> so it's, you know, I get the affirmation that I'm not just a cuckoo nut job, well, <laughs> um so anyway but that's like how many lives you choose to be at one time is different from having a portion of your soul go to someone all right so you say to me Benita give me a portion of your soul to help with a life and I'm like okay uh what is it for how much do you need and you're like you know what I want like 30 percent of me to be you and I'm like okay fine so you go through your life and it's a little more supported because you got 30% of someone, you know, and hi, um, sit wherever you like. Uh, we're just sort of getting started. So it's all good. Yeah. And there's this chair too, if anyone wants it, it's not videotaped. Um, so later, if we both decide in our like next lives or whatever to do past life regression or go into the akashic library and read the lives we both have access to that life like it's very loud today <laughs> yeah um, so say if you go in the akashic library and read that life for you it will be like a big bold life and you'll feel very supported in that life if I go and read it it might be in like sepia tones or like spotty because I'll only read the part of the life I was connected with to the level I was connected so I'll be like wait and then I died when I was 23 what or like no that's when I just stopped being useful for you so I don't know the rest of your life okay so these are where by soul contract we share ourselves and then we return there's no thought that someone will hold it you can't even if you're like no i like having bonita in me i'm gonna keep you in a cage and you can't because we signed a contract it returns to me uh, now there's another way and this is like who here knows like uh honeybee and michael abrams and the beautiful galactic gateway opening work Michael Abrams is the most amazing acupuncturist ever. He works here sometimes. So if you ever get a chance to do Archangel Michael uh, acupuncture session here with him, it is like unbelievable. So um, the first time I met Mike, they tell this story. So, you know, I'm, it's really funny the first time i met michael was the second time honey uh met him so she and i were at her house she goes around the world opening galactic gateways so that for the healing of the planet and um you know there are many times where i'll be like hey honey let's plan this let's plan that we're blah 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 and then suddenly i'll get a call oh divine sister i'm so sorry i have to cancel on our plans i am being sent to siberia to open a gateway you know and uh tomorrow i have to go and i'm like well how are you she said everything came together i got the ticket it all happened and you know everything fell in place i'm being sent i'm like who sent you and she's like our divine you know it's like well who's going with you no one 
so how do you know where to go? I'm being, you know, like everything falls into place and there she, she is. Um, I make it sound like it's easier on her than it is. Her, her path is like, thank God she's such a tenacious, divine, pure person. Um, if you can ever make it to any of Honey's ceremonies, wow. They are amazing and super intense and like mind blowing um, and energy blowing. So anyway, um, Honey and I were at her house. Uh, we were like doing a little energy work exchange. And um, so because of that, I was like wide open. And she said, um, afterwards, this fellow that I met, I think it was like two nights before, the night before, Michael is showing up to join us for lunch. And I want you to just like, tell me what you think of him. Because uh, she ran into him at some yoga meditation event, whatever. Um, and afterwards, when she was chatting with a person who said, honey, where are you going? She said, oh, I have to leave soon to go to Alcapulco to open a gateway. There's going to be a galactic gateway opening there. Um, and this is all like people who do astrology and cosmology, you know, and all, it's like when things suddenly come into alignment and it hits Earth, galactic gateway openers all find themselves there and they're like, oh, hey, nice to see you again. Haven't seen you like, and they all like, it, it's the most extraordinary thing. Well, as she was saying this to a friend, she heard someone speaking behind her saying, I have to go to Alcopulco to open a gateway there. And so she and Michael turned around. They're like, you, me, me, you. you know, so she's like, I want to get your take on this guy. Um, and uh, so then the doorbell rang and we greeted him. And as soon as he walked through the door, it's like I got locked into a light beam and all this information started coming out. And I was like, oh, the two of you are soulmates and um, you planned your lives in advance with accordance that you would find your way. To each of you gave each other a soul shard that you placed in your hearts so that you would find your way to each other when the time is right and that time is now. And now together you're going to be opening galactic gateways and you're like, I forget what all this information was pouring out about the divine work they were going to be doing. And I said, of course you have been together for eternity. You will be together for eternity. Your love is uh, pure. You are one, blah, 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 blah. And then like, I was like out of the trance and I looked at them, these two people who had only met briefly the one or two nights before and they were like oh <laughs> yeah all right that's kind of an intense thing <laughs> and I was like uh, and once you're done with this sacred work if you want you can separate and go on with your lives as you wish them <laughs> you know? no there was like no pulling that foot out of my mouth <laughs> like <laughs> Um, but it's true. It's true. They travel all over the world, opening galactic gateways. And it is like the work they do is amazing. Um, they, they wrote a book. I'm not sure if it's published yet or not about the divine channelings and like the work they do is among the most profound on the planet. And it was when the two of them came together that this really started happening and they have not yet reached their fruition. So it's just going to get more and more intense. But they had to give each other a splinter of their souls to put in their hearts to make sure they would find each other. And to make sure that uh, even as they were with other people in their lives, they were there for each other when the time was right. So these are times where soul shards are used for good purpose. Okay. If you do a soul shard retrieval ceremony, um, and you're like, oh, I'm missing a soul shard. I feel a crack right here. And you follow it. You're like, where are you? Where are you? You might find that the soul shard will say to you, no, I'm supposed to be here now. You know, come back and get me later or I'll come back to you when I'm ready. That's good. That's fine. You know, you can check with, are you doing okay? Yeah. Are you being abused? No, no, no. It's all good. I'm happy. All right. Stay there. Make sure you're home for dinner, you know. Uh, so I just mentioned that because um, you may feel an emptiness where that shard is supposed to be, but you don't feel a, um, a less than self 
feeling. It's not agonizing. Okay. So those, we just let them be. You can check in with them once in a while. Hey, Shard, how are you doing? I'm okay. All right. Stay there for now. Um, and by contract, it will return to you. Now, if when we do this ceremony, you look into yourself and you're like, oh my God, I got all these little creaks and cracks and cr like, where am I? Most of me is like out there somewhere. Um, when you check, there's always a line of connection between you and your soul shard. It's not severed from you. You may find it's being held hostage somewhere, or you may find it's like lazy and on vacation, or it may be stuck in a good memory or, um, uh, sometimes like, uh, I'll work with someone who is in a good loving relationship, but maybe a previous boyfriend or girlfriend has, a, like, maybe they did not claim all of their souls from each other. So while they're in the current relationship, part of their heart is still like yearning for the old one. And in some ways, like maybe making the old one seem like so much more wonderful than it was. If it was really all that wonderful, you would not have left it. So then you have to like talk to your soul and like, well, if that soul shard is back there, are you able to give all of yourself to the current relationship? Or are you in the current relationship? And eh, 98%, but 2%'s got a foot out the door because of this. So then you might want to claim your soul back to yourself, which with the cord cutting ceremony we we're talking about earlier, which you were there last week. That was awesome. With the cord cutting, you can see what current day lines of love exist between you and the prior relationship so that you can have a healthy current day loving connection to them but your soul is in your body and your current day, you know, paramour is getting what they need and for you to feel at peace with your rapport all around. So this is where like a soul retrieval is actually really important. Um, another reason is um, someone may be holding part of your soul hostage someone who doesn't want to let you go. And you're like, it's my soul. They can't hold my soul hostage. That is correct. But whoever is a more powerful person within their own skin, the person who's more like their own person in their own right, has the more power on holding on to the small shard. Uh, it's sort of like if you have a neighborhood bully and they're big and strong and you know they like take your lunch every day, so long as you're a tiny little weakling, they can take your lunch every day. And if you fight them, they're going to beat you up. But if you work it, then you realize you get bigger and stronger and bigger and stronger. And of course, if you're becoming bigger and stronger by your core of power and your connection with divine love, that bully will become smaller and smaller. Because, you know, bullying energy is never as powerful as divine energy. And then... Not only can you just take your soul shard back, but you can give love just for the sake of love in return. So um, the first time I ever attended a, a ceremony, a, a soul shard, you know, a soul recovery ceremony, uh, it was a shamanic ceremony. And this was like, years ago before I was fully awakened to the fact that my way of living reality was not the norm for everyone. So um, I just thought of myself as just like regular gal like everyone else, which I mean, we are, we are all regular people like everyone else. But at that point I thought everyone could see into other dimensions and stuff like that. So, um, so I was very nervous because I'm going into this soul recovery, soul retrieval ceremony, and everyone else seemed to know what they were doing. And I was kind of new to meditation. And so we sat down and we went into, we were brought into the meditative state. And um, the shamaness, who's like beating the drum and, you know, we've all been saged and everything. We're all like super heady. 
says, you know, look at yourself as a soul, look at your being of light within yourself and see where you have cracks and crevices where you're missing. And I look, I'm like, oh my God, I'm missing a whole lot of myself. And I was like, hey, soul, shards, get over here, get over here now. I, I started like clanging a cowbell, like get, get over here now. And all their, and they all got in me. I'm like, oh, well, that's better. Okay, now what do we do? And um, so, I mean, this was all in my head because we were being led on meditation, but I sat patiently waiting for like the next age. And she's like, now notice where you are missing aspects of yourself. And now you're going to go try to find one sliver of yourself. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> I know I did it all already. And now I got like another hour because it was going to be an hour long soul journey to get one shard. I was like, oh. I'm completely in myself. This is awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went on a, a sacred journey. I'm like, okay, you know what? If <laughs> like, what else? I got an hour to kill. <laughs> so I'm like, well, if my shards are jumping out of me so quickly and easily, I was like, hey, why didn't you guys show me? you know, places that you're jumping out to so I could learn why, you know, what is more tempting than me? You are like, show me the other lives you'd rather be with than me. <laughs> you know? I felt like a cuckolded wife demanding to meet the mistress, you know? <laughs> um, so I went on a journey through the clouds and, um, this is something that uh, that is a great way for connecting with your soul. There's like, um, you know, different realms of existence where you can get information. There's the Bardo, the Twilight Realm, where we went to for the cord cutting, which is the land that exists between all time and space, between physical and non-physical. Um, there's the Cloud Network where it's like you are in the clouds, only you see these like lines of light and energy flowing through. It's an informational cloud network, which always cracks me up when like people are dealing with the web and they're like stored in the cloud. Because so I'm like, that's literally what we have. We literally have a cloud network that I've been going into like all since I was a kid. And it's literally like, like, you know, when you look up in the sky in the summer day and you get like the lightning in the clouds, you know, it's kind of like that, only it's all kinds of colors and you can tap into energy there. And it's like an informational network. It's like going into the Akashic library, only it's a lot quicker and you can absorb a ton of information. It can also take you places. So I went into, I, one of my guides took me up to the cloud network and I was like, show me where my soul shards would rather be than in my body. And they took me, it was like, a, like a, we were flying in the clouds above the, you know, like looking down on the ground, but on the ground was like the patchwork of the landscape of all my lives. And it was almost like every life was right next door to each other. But if you zoomed in, it would spread out and you could see like more land. And then when you pulled your perception back, they would all get closer together. And it wasn't the lives that were chronologically or geographically near each other. It was more like energetically, karmically, which ones were on the same sort of lessons. And we stopped and we like visited with multiple lives and they showed us like, what their work was that was so important. I'm like, well, I could see why my soul would rather be there than here. So that's really cool. Um, and so I got those lives to start working with me as active guides in this life. I'm like, you know, if my soul is going to keep running away to them, I may as well have them with me to help me. So in this case, the soul retrieval really benefited me a great deal by pulling a lot of aid and help. Um, in the traditional soul retrieval, um, what used to happen back in the day is, you know, going back to the shamanic, 
uh, the shaman would look at you and see where you're missing parts of your soul and go to the lines of energy to where your soul is. It might be in the lower realm. It might be animal spirit guides or earth spirits or elementals who are holding your soul captive. Maybe you were like having a picnic somewhere and you dropped a shard of your soul and you went on and they found it. And they're like, hee hee hee, a nice little bubble, a toy, like a crow, you know, like with shiny bright things in their nest. Um, or it could be an experience you had, part of your soul wants to stay in that experience, or an experience you had, a person who was a part of it doesn't want to ever lose that moment, so they hold on to a portion of your soul. So there are different reasons why. When we do our first retrieval, um, you will follow your line of energy to a situation and learn like why your soul is there. What you generally do is uh, usually they won't, you can ask them, give it back to me. And generally they'll be like, no, why should I? You know, it's, I found it, you know, I like it, it's mine. Go get your own soul. And they're like, that is my soul. And they're like, yeah, you know, finders keepers. Uh, so you might trade with them. You can say, what would you like in exchange? Since they're holding on to a piece of energy, they generally want something energetic in exchange. So um, what you do is you sort of, there's several ways you can like resonate with them on what kind of energy they might like. Or just like when you do cord cutting, you just look in your hand and find something there. It might be a feather, it might be a crystal, it might be a breath of love, you know, there's so many different things. And you're like, would you like this in exchange? They might bargain with you a little bit. You know, anyone who's been to any open air market knows bargaining can be part of it. So you might offer different things or a few more things and then eventually they'll do the swap and you can take your soul back. Um, certainly there's a level of who is the more powerful being at this moment. If you are feeling victimized or intimidated by this whoever who's holding on to your soul, understand that this is an area that you have the opportunity to go in and look at yourself. Why would I feel like they're more powerful than I am? And, um, you know, that can be like, it might be a moment of trauma that's holding on to your soul that you don't want to deal with. Um, when we do our very first meditation, do not go to a trauma. Like, I'm going to say everyone go to like a light and easy soul shard retrieval. Don't pick the time when something just so horrible happened, you blocked it from your memory and now you're reliving it because, baby yeah, baby steps, <laughs> <laughs> incremental moments. Um, so for the first one, go for an easy one, follow an easy shard. And uh, we're going to do three soul retrievals. Um, I'm going to say for today, please don't go to the most horrible memory of your life. But if you find that you are feeling like there's a chunk of you that's missing, that's being held captive, these are the skills that you will learn to later go and deal with that. Because, you know, uh, we have all of us in our lives had very traumatic things that we don't want to deal with because they're traumatic. Um, when you deal with them, you want to make sure you got all your tools in your tool belt so that you can leave feeling like now I'm empowered. Now I am all with me. So consider today lessons to learn to later face that kind of thing. And then again, I'm going to load this onto YouTube so you can go back and do it again and again. Um, if at any point you feel like you want to face something huge and you want support for it, then make sure you have support. Either someone you met here that becomes a practice buddy or contact me or Jackie or, you know, someone safe to help deal with the trauma in a way that will help you accomplish your goal and raise your vibration up. All right. Okay. Um,
So I want to speak briefly about, um, so traditionally with the soul retrieval, the healer would do the retrieval and the person having their soul repaired might even be unconscious the whole time. But, uh, you know, the dynamics of the, our planet are changing and now we are teaching people to retrieve their own souls. This is a new thing. This is like even 10 years ago, you wouldn't, you would have to go through massive amounts of training to reach the lesson where you could do this. So it just shows that, you know, when we wonder like, is our planet evolving? Are things really happening? This is kind of proof that yes, it is. Yes. Um, but understand that this is a serious ceremony. Like if you were studying shamanic studies, this would not be something you would do in your first year. You know, you would build to this level of skill. Um, for people who do angelic work, um, there is an angelic side of the soul retrieval ceremony, which uh, some, I feel like some of you might be comfortable trying this technique as we're doing the ceremony, which is, um, you know, you ground yourself and you open yourself up for divine love and you connect with your guardian angel and then you invite your guardian angel to connect you to the angelic realm whichever group of angels within the angelic realm, you know, are most resonate with you and you invite them to fill you with their divine love. And then you like, as you're filled with divine angelic love and you let yourself glow from it, you look at where lines of light are shining out where you're missing parts of your soul and you follow those lines of angelic love. And when you get to where the angelic love ends, where your soul shard is, you just, whoever is holding it, you fill them with angelic love. They will always prefer that to holding on to a human soul. I promise. Always. It makes it super easy. So, like I said, there were many different ways of, of soul retrieval. When we are in meditation and my words are taking you through the ceremony, if your guides come along and say, we want to show you a different way, go with your guides. Okay. Because we're going to get our frequency really high, especially by the third ceremony. So you may find, well, Benita, while you all went there, my guides took me there. I'm like, awesome. You know, if we're on the ceremony and you're thinking about your shopping list, bring it back to this ceremony. But if you're on this ceremony and you're thinking about self-doubt, bring it back to the ceremony. But if your guides are like, oh, we've been waiting for you to get to this frequency so that we can share something with you, you might find that they even take you to a place that's not a soul retrieval ceremony, but it's a lesson that's really important to you. Go with it. Always go with your guides. Okay. Um, right. Any questions? Yes. The dismember. Oh yeah. So I was just wondering if that type of work also involved uh, bringing the soul pieces back together. Um, I have never combined soul retrieval with the dismembering because they're for different process. One is to really get to know yourself better. And the other one is to find lost bits. Um, but certainly if you were to do a full cord cutting and then heal and then do a soul retrieval and then heal and then do the dismembering, that would be really powerful. I wouldn't do them all at once. Yeah. Um, but that, that would be really very intense. Yeah. I was just wondering since it's like that kind of similar to you, since it's also work. They're, they're all intense. I mean, they can be, they don't have to be, they can be kind of fun and jovial. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, it can be like, 
as much as like chasing bunny rabbits trying to get them to return into you know it, it can be whatever you want um but um the the dismembering thing is about really like looking at yourself with your individual components taking yourself apart and rebuilding yourself in your most powerful blessed aligned state of being um and seeing how much there is of value within yourself healing everything that needs to be healed it's um we'll do that next weekend okay <laughs> um okay so let's take a short break um and then we will do three ceremonies